that we have the victory tonight. And Lord, we just give you the honor and the glory, and we thank you, Holy Spirit. We honor you in this place tonight. May we acknowledge you in our lives and also in our homes and in this church building. And we want to thank you now for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to rest upon us that you would show us the truth. And Lord, we know that as you show us the truth, we can be set free. To have that freedom, no wonder Paul says, stand fast in that liberty. God has set us free. And we thank you, Lord, that we're open tonight. We're an open book. We have nothing to hide. And we thank you. We can't hide from you, and we can't hide really from one another, but we cover people in love. We thank you now for your victory that you have given to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. This thing is sinking on me. There we go. All right. Everybody's got their book. Now, I want this back. I want all this back tonight because we're not going to be able to cover everything. So let's, let's read. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, a lot of people didn't know that Sunday, the work of the Holy Spirit was in this place. That was not the sermon that I planned. I flowed with the Holy Ghost in, in, in the service Sunday plus last Wednesday night. A lot of people just thought we planned it, all this. No, we were, it was, that was the Holy Spirit working. See, we see people, but we don't see the Holy Spirit. But those that have fellowship with him and know his ways, we know how he works. I do. I know how he's working. I know when he's working, and I also know when the devil's working. <laughs> so that's what we got to learn. All right, here we go. As well as those things mentioned in previous pages, the Holy Spirit is at work to do the following. Number one, he convicts the world of sin, of righteousness, and judgment. So what does that mean? Well, when I go out to witness, and wherever I go out, wherever I go, I witness. I give out tracts. I talk to people. I don't care where I'm at. My faith is in the Holy Spirit. My job and your job is to sow the seed, water the seed, and God does the convicting, God does his work. You must understand that, and if you do, you'll take a lot of load off of you, because we have the power to change nobody. But put your faith in the Holy Spirit, that when you go out and you witness and you talk and you pray, now, when the Holy Spirit, people say, I want to learn the voice of God. Well, <clears throat> let's say if the Lord, uh, Mike, the Holy Spirit says to you, go to Russia tonight and tell the Kremlin to straighten up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I want to hear the voice of God too much. Come on, church. Are you out there? You know? All right. I mean, you can go into the Bible, and then you've read your Bible. You know, Peter had to go to the, um, the Gentile's house, and God had to give him a vision before he would obey. <laughs> How many of you remember that? Acts 10, you know. So, Mrs. James, sell your house and go to Japan and tell them, <laughs> I rebuke you, devil. <laughs> now, I know that I'm humorous, but let's get the message. All right. Now, a lot of times God just doesn't speak like that. He, he speaks, but you just, you just know that you know. You just know that you know. No words said, you just know that you know. How many understand that? Good. You just know that you know. You know that's what you're to do, and you do it. You don't hear a, a, a vocal voice. 
But you know that you know that you know. Listen to this. The Holy Spirit bears witness. No word said now. This is biblical, Bible. The Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit that you are a son of God. No word said. He just bears witness with your spirit. And you know that you know because he's bared witness with your spirit. And in your spirit, you know that you're a child of God. No word said. So many times he'll speak and you just know that you're a child of God. You'll just know that you're supposed to do this. You just will know by your spirit that this is the way to walk. Okay? All right. Now, two things I want you to see. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin, but the Holy Spirit will convict the church of sin. All right, you got to see it two ways. And let's look at it. That's good. We don't want to go our own way and do something continuously and it be deception in our life. Okay? Now, that's the way I am. I, I, I suppose you guys have reached that point, have you? Because I have a relationship with God that I know that he loves me and he's going to direct me and guide me. And he's not up there to beat me up. He's there to direct and, and, and even show me things to come that will come. See? So we want to learn about the Holy Spirit and how he works and moves. Now he convicts the world of sin, but he convicts the world of, about righteousness. That they have no righteousness within themselves to stand before God or come into the presence of God. And they're convicted that they're a sinner. And they cry out to God, and then God gives them the righteousness. Now they can approach God with that righteousness. So he convicts the world that they're not righteous, and that they need a righteousness, but it comes from God. And then the judgment. He convicts about, there'll be a judgment. There'll be a judgment for the non-believer. There'll be a judgment for the believer. Uh, 2 Corinthians Chapter 5, verse 10, we all will stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of what we do in this body, good or bad. Whoop. All right, so there we have it up there. For we must all appear and be revealed, oh my goodness, listen, as we are. Now that's why we want all deception to go now. Because I don't want to stand up there and, and then you guys are going to see me as I is. But I hope I is what I is. <laughs> How many of you understand what I'm talking about? That you'll see if I'm just counterfeit, just all talk and no action. You, you follow me? That's, that's, that's serious. For we must all appear. That sounds like the poke. The pastor, the elder, the deacon, everybody, and be revealed as we are before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, we're not going to be judged as far as our salvation goes. That's taken care of. We're not talking about hell and heaven here, but we're talking about as far as rewards go. And God let us know how we really were and are and how much deception we were really in or how much hypocritical ism we had in our lives okay all right so that each one may receive his pay in other words it's payday looking forward to it i like that last part that first part of, uh, you know <clears throat> might be a little <clears throat> scary according to what he has done in the body in these bodies whether good or evil and I've often wondered, well, what, what would be evil? Well, today people call things evil that's good, and things that are good, evil. So God will discern, well, well, what we might think, well, this was good, what I'd done. And God said, no, that was really evil. Because your motive, your motive wasn't right. Your motive wasn't love. See? Considering what his purpose, notice, considering what our, our purpose, our motive have been and what we have achieved, been busy with and given himself and his attention to accomplishing. 
But the altar is open if we want to, anybody want to come to the altar? <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> you might meet me there. <laughs> now see, this is truth. Can we stand that type of truth? Remember, God loves you. It's not a matter of going to hell or nothing. It's getting us to come into reality there. So, the Holy Spirit is so precious. So he convicts of sin, and that's what I want. I want to know if what I'm doing is sin, where I can confess it, because God's paid for it through Christ, and get it clear. How many, you know? Some people say, oh, don't tell me I sinned. No, I want to know if I've sinned. Because we can sin in attitude, we can sin in motive, many different ways that we can sin, see. But so the Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment. But he also will convict the believer. Not condemn us, but convict us. Now, I, I want to stop here because if you don't bring it down where we live, we're just... When was the last time you were convicted of something? Today. Who said 80 years ago? Oh, sir, when? Today. Today, okay. Today, all right. So now, thank God the Holy Spirit's working in your life. See, you are, he, he, he's working, that's, that's all. Anybody else? All right, back here, all right. Do you remember the last time you were convicted of anything? How about back in the back corner over there? Missy, when's the last time you was convicted of anything? Huh? <laughs> you don't remember? Oh, all the time. Okay, that's good. See, now you know he's, wor he's working. See, how about you? No, I'm talking to you. You, you. When's the last time you was convicted? The other day, how about you? Today. Today. <laughs> That's good. See, the Holy Spirit is working. If he's not working, if he don't ever convict you of something, maybe we better check our salvation. Am I coming through? Yes. That's good. That's good. Now, think, you see, we always think of conviction as bad. Now think for a moment. Has God ever convicted you that you are looking at yourself in the wrong way and you're really a child of God and you've been made righteous, but you keep saying, oh, I'm just an old rag in the, back in the closet. I, I'm not worth being saved. And he convicts you of this and said, no. Don't you remember what Jesus did? He clears you of every charge. You have been set free. The handwriting has been nailed to it. As he can see, he can convict us that way. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, I see, we need to understand that. So the Holy Spirit is so important in our lives. All right, we got, I got so much to cover but the time element, but let's move, Bob, I believe it will. All right, what I want to do, I want to, I want to get into the scriptures now, and I want you to turn to uh, John 16, verse 5, and we're going to go into the Word of God here a little bit. Because believe me, this is a, a lot of teaching here. And we got to get down to the nitty gritty. Now Jesus is talking here. And now I am going to, I am now going to him. Remember, capital letters. So now Jesus is going to go to the Father who sent me. Who sent Jesus. God sent Jesus to this earth. Yet none of you asked me, where are you going? Now, we think of the disciples as some brilliant people, and they were brilliant. They had their problems too. They had their fears. They didn't know a lot. The only thing they knew is what God told them. Okay? Now, I want to move on here, and, and, and you'll, get the, the, you'll get this. Now, let me say this. If you go back to chapter 11... And I'm going to read the first verse. Uh, if you don't, put it up here if you don't mind. John uh, 11, 1. No, that's not right one. I'm sorry. John. 
All right, 12. Uh, it's 12. John 12, 1. John 12, 1. So six days before the Passover feast. Now, this is a marker. When you see that in John 12, that's a marker. Because we know now six days is going to come, go, and then that's when Jesus is going to be crucified. Do you see that in the scriptures? That's a marker. So what he's doing now in these six days, he's prepping the disciples about the Holy Spirit and about him going to the Father, in which they do not understand, okay, at this time, all right? So when you read that, you see six days before the crucifixion. Now let's go back to uh, John 16, verse uh, 6 now. All right, and we're going to go verse by verse. Here we go. But because I have said these things to you, now notice this, he's talking to the disciples, sorrow has filled your hearts, taking complete possession of them, of the disciples. You see, everything wasn't fuzzy, fuzzy with them either. And Jesus is talking, and they don't fully understand. He's talking about going away, going to the Father. The Father sent him, now he's going back to the Father. What is he talking about? So you have to get a gist of a, a, a mental picture <clears throat> of what they are feeling, what they are feeling, because we all feel things. We were created to feel things, but we have to know how to handle those things because emotionally, many of those things that we feel can literally destroy us and send us to our grave before our time if we don't know how to handle that emotional part of our being. Is everybody following me so far? Am I I'm not talking too loud, am I? Okay, I got my hearing aid in and I don't know. Okay, look at verse 7 now. Jesus is talking. However, I am telling you, that he's talking to his disciples, nothing but the truth. When I say it is profitable, good, expedient, and advantageous for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the advocate, the intercessor, the strengthener, the standby, which is the Holy Spirit, will not come to you into close fellowship with you. But if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. Now, I don't know where all of you are. I have a general idea. But I have fellowship with the Holy Spirit every day. Now, this may be new. Now, this is going on a DVD and, 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 and people are going to hear me say, fellowship with the Holy Spirit? You mean actually fellowship with him? Yeah. With your spirit and with your mind. You can talk to him and thank God that he is God living in us. Now notice what Jesus said. It's expedient that I go. Now I want you to see the wisdom of God here. Jesus in his, in his body, physical body, could only be at one place at a time. Look at this wisdom of God. Jesus will be crucified and carry our sins upon himself and set us free and go to the Father and he will send the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit will not go into that, that big building that they built for him, that he stayed in that Holy of Holies for all those years, and nobody could get to him because that curtain split. And so when God came out of that Holy of Holies, we became the temple of God. And now he lives in every one of us. He lives in every child of God all over the world. And he can be with every one of his children 24-7. That's the wisdom of God. So it's expedient. And Jesus knew that. I have to go. Yes, I got to go to the cross. But I got to go and ask the Father and I will pray. And he will send you another comforter. And you can have fellowship with him every day. Now, I'll...
want you to correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't see anywhere in the Bible that we pray to the Holy Spirit, but we can talk to the Holy Spirit. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. If you find a place, let me know. I'd like to know, know that, but because I talk with him all the time. I say, Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're with me today. You'll never leave me, never forsake me. I thank you, Lord, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Years ago, <clears throat> when I was in the Baptist church, and I really got into the Word of God and read it verse by verse to get the gist of the whole thing, <clears throat> I became a student of the Word of God. 24-7, I swam. That was my swimming pool. <laughs> I never wanted to get out. <laughs> you remember I said that when we were kids, you never wanted to get out of the swimming hole until that alligator started coming down, and boy, you learned to walk on water, didn't you? <laughs> How many were like that when you were kids? You, you know, just, you weren't like that way? Oh, well, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> I want to make you conscious of the Holy Spirit. Right now. He's in you. He's in me. What was accomplished at Calvary Yes, our sins were forgiven. Yes, we have been bo we have, we're born again. But God now lives within his children. How would you like to be with your kids? And they don't know it. 24-7. What would you say to them when they went into a beer joint? Order two, <laughs> one for you, one for me. See, I'm saying all of that, that we could grasp it. We have to grasp it, that God lives in us. He goes with us 24-7. Now, don't get right or go by, but I tell you, ain't many folks really know that. And they go to church. They don't understand. God Almighty that created everything lives in this man. Lives in you. All right, Jesus is saying something now. Let's look at the next verse. Verse 8. And when, he, and when he comes, when he, who's he? The Holy Spirit comes. He will convict and convince the world and bring demonstration to it about sin and about righteousness, uprightness of heart and right standing with God and about judgment. So he makes all that clear. He teaches uh, the sinner that, but he teaches us that. Okay? And I could, I could talk it like that, but I've already covered that a little bit. Let's go to the next verse. Look at 9 now, verse 9. About sin, because they do not believe in me, trust and rely on and heave to me. So he convicts them about sin. That is the lost person. He convicts us all about sin. That's why we reached out to him by faith. And we realized he was our Savior. He could save us from our sin. Go to the next verse about righteousness, uprightness of heart, and right standing with God, because I go to my Father, and you will see me no longer. Now that made them sad. They didn't understand that God, that Christ was going to come back and send His Spirit. Because you'll read in the Bible, the Spirit of Christ and the Holy Spirit is the same Spirit. The Spirit of Christ comes into our heart when we accept Christ, Christ in our heart is the only hope of glory or only hope of heaven. So now, Jesus is prepping them and talking to them. All right, look at the next verse. Verse 11. About judgment because the rulers, the evil genius prince of this world, Satan, is judged and condemned and sentence already is passed upon him. He has already been sentenced. He's already been beaten. God's already dealt with him, but he's still on this earth. 
And the power that he has is deceive, deception, deception. You have to guard your mind. The Bible says guard your heart with all diligence. Guard your mind. I'll guarantee you today, Satan has talked to every one of us in our minds. I couldn't tell you what he said. Couldn't you? Because he'll always, he'll always get you to look at something negative about somebody and you'll set your mind on them and destroy your own faith. Now, if you're walking in the spirit, you know what I'm talking about. Everything that goes in your mind, imaginations. Why did God say cast down those imaginations? Because they eat from God. Casting down imaginations and what else? And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And when you come to that realization, you're going to find that you're going to be spending a lot of times that, that I will not think on that. Bob, what did you think about so-and-so? I don't think about so-and-so. I will not allow that negative thing to come into the temple of God and just poison me about somebody. Are you out there, church? See, I'm bringing it down where we live. And this is what we have got to do. See, that's deception. He deceives the Christian with imaginations. I guarantee you, if you thought I didn't love you and you start thinking about that, you'd have a bad attitude towards me. Anybody listening? Yes. If the enemy get put that thought in my mind, something about you, and I, and I start thinking negative about you, I would have an attitude about you that wouldn't be godly. Come on, church, don't shout me down now. I know people ain't used to this type of truth, but boy, we got to get down to this thing. God wants to send a revival. We don't want to be like James and John. Send power. I mean, yeah, Lord, fire down and wipe them out. Someone says, I, I'll be glad when revival comes. I'm telling you, it's here. Say, I'm a revival. Man, I'm a 100% revival. But I have learned and going through my Gethsemane experiences, believe me, more than one time. I don't have to be drugged all over the county by the devil to learn something anymore. When the Holy Spirit speaks, thank you, Father. You're keeping me out of deception. All right, church, here we go. Go to the next verse. Now, oh, Jesus said, I stand have still many things to say to you. Listen to that. Look at that now. Look at that. I have still many things to say to you, but you are not able to bear them or to take them upon you or to grasp them now. I'm not Jesus. I'm just a shepherd. But I know that to be true. Yes, you heard me, but you haven't really heard me. Because when you hear what the Spirit is saying, it changes your life. Now you know that you know that you know that you know. And then we go through the experience and then we look and realize, I really didn't know. <laughs> was it this bad? I didn't know it was this bad. <laughs> but you pass through that and then you become wiser and you realize the devil has teeth. Now you understand what it is to be disappointed. Now you understand what it means to be a stink to some folks and a sweet-smelling offering to others. And so when you become a stink to some folks, don't get shook up, don't be blowed out of the boat, just say,
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody out there? <laughs> oh, come on, church. Hallelujah. Glory to Don't let it put. The devil's going to take that thing and bring you down. Well, how do you know, Brother Bob? Because I've been brought down so many times. I've learned not to let it happen no more. You see, I was afflicted before I was. No, I went astray before I was afflicted. Look at me. I don't go, I don't go straight no more. By God's grace. Because <laughs> you see, I learned something that uh, in my affliction. I learned how to bless my enemies. Before that, I would send them to the moon. But the moon ain't got a whole lot more, ain't got much room up there anymore. Come on, love me a little bit, church. If you're in the spirit, you understand what I'm saying. If not, you're just, you're, you're like the disciples. <laughs> what do you mean you're going to the Father? We're going to go with you. No, you ain't. You're going to stay on this earth. I got a job for you boys. But when he, the Holy Spirit, comes to you, he'll teach you everything. He'll show you the future. He'll empower you to be a witness, to stand. When the wind, when the wind blows, don't make no difference. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I will not allow the devil to put me down any longer. He's under my feet, and he's going to stay there. You know who put him under my feet? Jesus did. Come on, church, shout at me or throw a rock at me or something. Just don't shoot me with a submachine gun. I can't stand that. <laughs> Are we having fun tonight? How many know I'm speaking truth? Okay. Of course, I could butter it up for you if you want me to. <laughs> Put a little honey on it. And... All right, this, now, Jesus is talking to the boys Notice what it says. I have still many things to say to you, but you're not able to bear them or to take them upon yourself or to grasp them now. I had a young man come to me and said, Bob, God's called me into the ministry. I'm an evangelist. I say, praise God. <clears throat> he says, I want you to tutor me. I said, I'll be glad to. So when are you going to let me speak? I said, well, I got some other jobs I want you to do first. <laughs> well, we got a, a scepter back there, a scepter back there that you, you, you know, you plumb the commode with. Now you go back there and you clean that bathroom up and get that thing unstopped back there. That's your first sermon right there. You can demonstrate it by your action. <clears throat> you know, I hadn't seen that boy. I mean, he, when he left, I hadn't seen him since. You know, we see somebody with the anointing on them. Oh, that's what I like. Well, you, are you ready to go through the, the contrite machine? Are, are you ready to be chewed up this way and then chewed out that way and, and spit on this way and kick that way and, and then put back into the coffee grinder and grind you up a little bit more and then feed you to the cows and let them eat and, and pff you out? And, and then you'll be ready for the master's hand. Ain't nobody shouting in here tonight. Woo! You better praise God where you is. But God is so gracious. He knows how much we can take because you are not able to grasp it now. And I might be a little tough here tonight on you, but I think some of you probably can grasp what I'm saying. If you're not, just throw the DV away and go back to the you know, to the fuzzy, whatever. Okay, here we go. Next verse. But when the Holy Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth. He's a, he has many names. The spirit of grace, the spirit of truth, the, the comforter, the intercessor. He's got so many different names. And he functions on all of those things. The truth-giving spirit. That's why I said 
You want to know the truth, even though it hurts. We don't want no deception in our lives, children. And that means we will all do some repentance, including your pastor, which I have gladly will do, because I will not tell you to do something that I won't do. I was a foreman for many years, and I never told my men to do something that I wouldn't do. As a pastor, I've been back there and I've scrubbed those commodes. I've cleaned this building. I've cut the grass. I've cut the trees down. You name it, and I've done it. And my wife right there with me. But my elder and his wife are so gracious to me, they don't want me to do that now. Now that I'm 183. I mean, almost 83. All right, look what it says now. We're talking about truth here. The whole full truth. We should have a, I will not justify myself. I said I will not justify myself. I'll leave it with God. And I can show you scriptures that Paul said the same thing. Oh, he tried to tell him he was an apostle to the Gentiles. He, you know, but he said, but you know what? God will be the one to judge me. Get that solid in God. Get that solid in God. Truth. And Thessalonians says, Paul says in the book of Thessalonians, I think it's chapter 2, he says, you don't have to turn there. Because they did not love the truth, oh, God gave them up to believe a lie. Yes. Crave the truth like you do watermelon on a hot day. Crave it. Don't justify yourself. Bow before the almighty God. Put your nose in the carpet and say, God, that knoweth all things. All things. And how many of you know? He gives grace to the proud. Huh? I missed that? Yes. He gives grace to the humble. Let's read on. Jesus is talking now. The whole full truth, for he will not speak his own message on his own authority. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. But he, the Holy Spirit, will tell whatsoever he hears from the Father. Boy, that's powerful. Because when the Holy Spirit talks to us, he will tell us what the Father is saying. Yes. And that's what we're to do. Tell people what the Father says. Not what I think or I feel. Feelings can change. Happy one day, sad the next. Have you noticed that? It fluctuates with the weather. Look what it says. Now this is Jesus speaking. He will give the message that has been given to him. The Holy Spirit will speak and give the message that was given to him by the Father. And he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. We will know. That day will not catch you unaware. I could go up so many scriptures I can quote to, to, to people. Boy, to know. And now you, you know how to conduct yourself. You know how to live each day. You know how to think, function, walk, love, rejoice each day. Because the Holy Spirit will let us know even the things in the future. Next verse. Now Jesus is prepping his disciples now because he's about to leave the earth in the crucifixion. And you remember the story. They scattered when the shepherd was shot, killed. The sheep scattered. 
He will honor, now is he, who is he? The Holy Spirit will honor and glorify me, that is Christ, because he, the Holy Spirit, will take up, receive, draw upon what is mine, that is Christ, and will reveal, declare, disclose, and transmit it to you. Powerful. Next verse. Everything that the Father has is mine, Jesus says. That is what I mean when I said that he, the Spirit, will take the things that are mine and will reveal, declare, disclose, transmit it to you. How important the Holy Spirit is to each and every one of us. Now let's take our sheet now and let's look at the next thing. Without this special work. Now, I want you to see the working of the Holy Spirit in your life. What is he doing in your life and my life? If I had time, I could would gladly explain to you what God's doing in my life at, at 83 years old. Now remember, he has begun a good work in us, and he, the Holy Spirit, will continue that work until the coming of the Lord. So what kind of work is he doing in you? Now I'm stirring your minds and you need to think. Well, you, you, you might say, well, you know, he's learning me to forgive uh, more quickly. Oh, he's teaching me to, to stop looking at this particular program on, on, on TV. Because I know we don't have people in here that would watch uh, certain things, you know. And believe me, I know because God had to deal with me on that. Did God have to deal with you on that? Yes. Come on, don't lie to me. I know. I know. I've been around a long time. Because, see, I have people that confess to me and tell me what the Lord has been doing in their lives. And it's so exciting. I had one guy, he was having such a hard time with lust, and he was watching the thing on TV. He said, Bob, what can I do? Well, number one, I'll tell you what you do. Get rid of your TV. If your hand offends you, cut it off. Now, I know we don't understand that, but when you understand what hell is, and, and then just uh, go through this life half, uh, just with, with just one arm, uh, is nothing compared. I mean, I'd rather just have this cut off and go to heaven than go to, have it on me and go to hell. See, Jesus was jarring humanity. So he was so gracious, he brought his TV to my house. <laughs> now I got two TVs I can watch all that garbage on. <laughs> Come on, church, smile at me. <laughs> well, I taught him about the reckoning and how to yield it all to the Lord and all the things, and he got the victory on it. And then he said, well, I'll take my TV back a year later, and I give it back to him. I had it out in the garage. And I think the rats had eaten pretty well all the wires up, so when he got it, it wasn't no good anyway. But anyway, if it is, it's worth getting rid of it. It's quiet up there in the hayloft. <laughs> Woo! All right, just check and see if you're still alive. All right, look. Well, we've already said that. Now let's go, let's read this. Are we ready? Without this special work of the Holy Spirit, people would not be deeply convinced of their sinfulness. God's righteousness or the coming judgment. Therefore, in communicating the word of God to others, we must depend upon the Holy Spirit to convince people of these truths. We may say what the word says on these issues, but it is the Holy Spirit who will do the convicting. And relax in it. Relax in it. He watches over his word to perform it. Okay, let's read on. All right. Number two, he guides, he guides us into all truth. Notice this. He guides us into all truth. How many in here wants all truth? Raise your hands. Man, I want all truth. I don't want no lies. I have people that I counsel and they just lie to me and I know in the spirit they are lying. 
I can't help you if you're going to lie to me. Let's face the truth and get delivered and get set free. And be that way with you and God, okay? Lord, I want to know the truth. And when he, when he shows you the truth, don't fall apart. Just humble yourself and say, Thy knoweth, O Lord, thy knoweth. See, that's how the freedom comes. Because you become an open book to God. He knows it anyway and still loves you. And he sympathizes with us. I mean, you read uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse uh, uh, 14, 15, and 16 there. We have a high priest that can be touched with our infirmities. He knows all about all of the temptations and he has compassion for us and he will help us. So you get to know the Lord like that. You get to know the Holy Spirit like that. He doesn't point out something to condemn us. He points out something to deliver us. Oh, so you got to have that type of love for him. you got to have that type of picture of, of how gracious and wonderful he is. Oh, he's so wonderful. So wonderful. All right. Now, look at this. John 16, 13. How bit when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak. And we read that. Let's go to the next. If we allow ourselves to be guided by him. Notice, if we allow ourselves to be guided by him. Now, let, let me say something here now. And remember, remember, I'm human too, okay? But when you got something that you're drawing a certain amount of pleasure from, a certain amount of power from, that makes you feel good, you're not real quick to cut that off. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? And you got to say, God, I, I, I just, I just got, I can't, I, I need that. Whether it be an, a, 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 a toddy every morning or a beer or, or whatever. We, 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 we got to have that. And we feel that if we don't have that, we'll fall apart. And we got to be willing to say, Lord, I really want it. I feel like I need it. And I just can't give it up. But Lord, help me to give it up. Holy Spirit, please. Thank you for giving me that grace. Yes, Lord, grace upon grace. To cut that evil soul tie from that thing. And here's the beautiful thing about it. You give it a week or two or three weeks. I've, about four weeks. And it is like. It means nothing to you. How many understand what I'm talking about? It's so beautiful. when Now you're seeing the Lord really work. You say, well, hallelujah. That's it. No, I've got a few other things here we're going to have to deal with. <laughs> Remember, he started a good work. And he will continue that work until the coming of the Lord. So there is that continued work that he does in us. We're not talking about hell and heaven here. We're talking about God purifying us and sanctifying us for the work that he wants to do through us and in us and through us. <clears throat> you don't send your kids to school to, to make them your children. You send them because you want them to learn. And when they get into society, they will know how to act, get a job, and, and read and write and, 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 and enjoy life. And that's what God wants with his children. See, we've got to change our attitude about the Lord and realize he's a good Lord. All right, let's turn our page real quick. Here we go. Now. Being the author of the Bible, he is best, now we're talking about the Holy Spirit, qualified to interpret it to us. That's why I rely upon the Holy Spirit to show me the Word of God. I can go verse by verse. And some things that I come to and I don't understand, I ask him, I still don't understand, I go on. And I, and I nurture the things that I do understand, and then after a while I come back and he shows me. If I had time, I could show you a particular passage of Scripture, how the Lord showed me to go to another, uh, in the New Testament, then I understood what uh, Isaiah 53 said in a, ver in, a, in a verse. All right, he will show us many things, both directly from the Word, but also through our means. What he shows cannot be mere product or logic and reason, although it is not illogical. 
but we must realize that the Holy Spirit never guides us in any way contrary to the Holy Scriptures. The Holy Scriptures will verify what he says. We must not believe every spirit claiming to be from God, but test the spirits according to the standard of the Holy Scriptures. A lot of times I have people that tell me this and tell me that, and I say, well, thank you, appreciate it, but how about just show me? <laughs> I'm like James. I'll show you my faith by my works. Well, I've had hundreds, and I still love them. I know the deception that's in, in, in a lot of folks. All right, he regenerates. John 3, 5, and 6. The Holy Spirit regenerates. All right, John 3, 5. Well, let's put that on the board. John 3, 5. And then we'll go down to 6. All right, now Jesus answered, I assure you most solemnly, I'll tell you, unless a man is born of water and even the Spirit, he cannot ever enter the kingdom of God. Now, when you see that water and you say, what in the world is that? Is that water baptism? What is that? Well, most Bible scholars believe that is the, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the water that breaks from a woman and, and the baby comes forth. And when the water breaks, then the baby's being born, okay? Now, you may have a different view of that. Tell me what it is later on. But most people believe water and even the spirit. So we know we're born natural first through the water birth, and then we are born by the spirit spiritually. Okay? He cannot ever enter the kingdom of God. So we have to be born again to be able to enter into the kingdom of God. The Bible says that when we're born again, he removes us out of the kingdom of darkness and he puts us into the kingdom of the Son of God and we, we are adopted into his family. We become his children and our inner man, listen, our inner man is born again. Our inner man becomes a new creature in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. A new creature. Our spirit man is a new creature. And that's why people don't understand and the world don't understand that at all. So he's talking to Nicodemus here. Now, because he says in 3 6, look at 3 6 now. What is born of from the flesh. Now, take that water birth, that's the flesh. Remember, we're right on that same page. What is born of the flesh is flesh, that's the water birth. The child comes out through the water canal, the birth, and it's flesh. He's flesh. And then he said, of the physical is physical. And what is born of the Spirit is spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the one that caused us to be born again. Recreated our spirit man. And now we are new creatures in Christ. Now we have the same bodies right now. But one day we'll have a glorified body and that, that born again spirit will enter into that glorified body in which we'll live in that glorified body forever and ever and ever. It's a beautiful picture. It's a beautiful thing. You know, we say, you know, remember a thousand, one, a thousand years is but one what? One day. And one day is a thousand years to the Lord. So, from right here, if we count, it's been two days since Jesus died on the cross in God's calendar. So we have to learn to see it through God's eyes and how he sees it throughout eternity. That's why, Paul, that's why James says, our life is but a vapor. I look back at my life, it's like a vapor now. How many see their, their lives like a vapor? Are you old enough to see that? You, you too, you see that. You got another 10 years, don't you? You're 40, yeah, you got maybe, maybe 15, 20, it might be 30, we don't know. But it ain't gonna be too much after that, okay? All right, notice there what it says now. So we gotta be born again. See, the world, the world cannot understand us. They can't understand you. They're controlled by the culture of the day, by the culture of the un, ungenerated spirit. That's why we have to make sure that we don't get caught up in the world system. 
and just start acting like the world system does. Okay, now let's move on. Here we go. Now, when a person turns to Christ for salvation and trusts Christ from the heart, the Holy Spirit is involved. See, we didn't realize that. Well, I look back now and I really realize at this time, the Holy Spirit causes the spirit of that person to be made new. Well, I just said that. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. The human spirit, once dead in sin, is regenerated or made new by the power and working of the Holy Spirit. This is what it means to be born of the Spirit. Boy, don't you appreciate the Holy Spirit? He's the one that did the work. We couldn't, we couldn't do it. Well, I'll just be good. No, you won't. <laughs> You've got to trust the Holy Spirit to do the work in you and make you good, and then you'll be good. How many every New Year's you turn, on, turn over a new leaf? I wore my leaf out. Turned it over so many times. No, I've learned. It will be God that has changed me inwardly. And then one day he's going to change me outwardly. And I can't wait. All right, church. Notice four. He glorifies Christ. John 16, 14. He shall glorify me. Now Jesus is speaking. For he shall receive of mine and, and shall show it unto you. All right, page three. The Holy Spirit always works to bring glory and honor to Jesus Christ. He does not seek his own glory, but the glory of Jesus. He does this by revealing who Jesus is to us and through us so that all may praise Jesus. He makes Jesus real to people by bringing the resources and reality of Jesus to the people on earth. Look at five. He reveals Christ to us and in us. See, he's the one that reveals, reveals. And then you know that you know. How do you know, Bob? Well, the Lord revealed it to me. Did he write it on the wall? No. He just revealed it to me. What you know, the Holy Spirit's revealed it to you. Well, we could camp out right there. Wow. You know how I know that God loves me? The Holy Spirit reveals it, revealed it to me. Now, no more do I try to figure it out intellectually. I know. Well, how do you know, Bob? Because the Holy Spirit made it alive to me. See, he bared witness with my spirit that he loves me. He bared, uh, he bared witness to my spirit that I'm a child of God. He bared witness with my spirit that I've been adopted into the family of God. See, until that happens, we'll just all be confused. That's why we trust in the one that he sent our way. The Holy Spirit. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. When you pray, pray it. Lord, Holy Spirit, if I've grieved you in any way this day, in my thought, my action, my attitude, God, forgive me if he will. Keep your relationship up to date with the Holy Spirit. All right, let's finish reading this. We've got one more minute and I'll, we'll have to close. I know, I know you don't want me to close, but i got to. Time, Ellen. <laughs> Jesus said he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. It is the Holy Spirit who communicates to our soul the knowledge of who Jesus is. Now, how does he communicate that knowledge to us? By his spirit. Listen to this. The Bible says it has not entered into, let me get it straight. Tell me that. What is that scripture? Tell me, quote it. Yeah, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what the Lord has prepared for them, but he has showed us how? To us how? By his spirit. So you trust him daily. 
to show you how to walk. When you get into the Bible, let him teach you. That's why we pray, Lord, illuminate my mind. Let my heart be filled with the light of your spirit. Hallelujah. I've, I've heard testimonies, I'm going to let you go, of, of, of people that couldn't even read, know more about God and the working of the Holy Spirit than somebody they could read because they solely relied upon the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say something. I've got to quit. You take a blind person. They're, they're blind. Our brother there. He can't see as well as we do. But he has certain senses. He can sense things probably more keener than, than I could. Is that right, brother? You can sense things. You can't see it, but you can sense. Amen. Somebody's here in the room. He can sense that. His senses have been tuned. And our senses in the spirit needs to be tuned daily. And so talk with the Holy Spirit in, 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 in daytime and talk with him and, and, and rely upon him. When, I, when Susan and my day is over, we look back and see how the whole, we prayed that morning, how the Holy Spirit directed that whole day. And we could, I could preach a message on how, from the very time I got up, how God began to direct and God reveal, uh, show me things, different things and all, and worship and praise in Him. And I mean, just a whole, a look back, what a nice day it was. Awesome. Everything just comes together. Totally trusting in the Lord. Oh, some things are bitter. Some things are sort of sour. But you see, I know that God causes good to come out of everything, those that love the Lord, and my faith is in Him, and the Holy Spirit, you see, is, has all power, and, and I'm well taken care of because, see, He's with me, and He's promised He would never leave me nor forsake me, neither will He'll forsake you, and you don't have to think about a lot of stuff. Don't think about a lot of stuff. What can you do about it? Do, don't think about it at all. Just get your mind on Jesus. Hallelujah. Makes you want to holler, don't you? Ooh, go ahead, I dare you. Ah, ooh, man. Just get your mind on Jesus. Quit thinking about what they did at work and what they didn't do and what this person did and what that person did. Don't drown yourself in that garbage anymore. Somebody say, I love you, Pastor Bob. Mm-hmm. It's, sometimes it's hard. It's hard. Whoops, whoops. All right. I think we better quit while I'm ahead. Did we learn anything?